Welcome back, gamers. So, today's episode, we have a lot of days to condense as well. We're covering from day 6 to day 12, including the new event that's currently going on. A couple days back, I started doing flag race for my guild and flag race, I think it runs during the daytime every hour on the dot. It's pretty much a jump quest if you guys are into that and you're in a guild, they're really nice to do to get your guild rank up. There are a couple of flag race guide videos on YouTube that you can look up if you guys want to know the fastest way to get through the jump quest. Uh, I myself, I'm still a newbie. As you can see in the video, I keep falling and I got stuck on this one part which was very annoying. But at the time of me doing this jump quest, I hadn't watched any guides before and I kind of regret it a bit. but. I learned my lesson and I went to watch a guide video after. It's pretty uh, self-explanatory. I also started doing Ursus daily as you guys know. I will have a guide video uploaded for Ursus if you guys just came back and you're interested. I will also have some pre-quest guides on Arc, Von Leon, and Pap. If you guys are interested in those guides, they will be released eventually. Tune in for that. So on day 6 of my gameplay, my friend and I got a couple ring. As you guys know, I got a friendship ring with my friend Alice and my other friend Keaton didn't have anyone that had a ring with him so we were like oh why, why not just uh, get a couple ring for ourselves and of course we also ran dailies and then I myself I did my pre-quests for arc we do want to start doing arc daily because we want the dominator pendant drop that's gonna be one of our end pieces of gear for our pendant aside from a uh, superior pendant um, and after doing arc prequests, I was able to get a arc carry from my friend uh, Ryan. Although later on, I realized that um, I can actually do arc as long as I have a bind on him. But you, you guys do want to try to bind him if you have a lower range, if you're not one shotting him, because uh, he is pretty annoying to deal with. Um, but anyways, my friend Ryan and Andrew, who came back to Maple just for fun, he used to play this game two years ago and he was number one Night Lord of Reboot. He tried to duo Hellux with Ryan, who also stopped playing. So both of them are like really washed up, right? But with their range, we were thinking, oh, maybe they could do Hellux. But we <laughs> were wrong because uh, Helix got changed and you know everything got more annoying the hitboxes and it takes a lot more now to solo than it did be before but after that I did some pop prequests uh, I did get confused a little bit here with the star forcing but I did end up figuring it out eventually and like I said I will make a guide video on this for anyone else who gets confused by it. I'll just use the same footage since I can't do the prequest twice on that character. But I'll make a video explaining everything. And after I finished my pop prequest, I tried soloing pop with zero knowledge of the pop mechanics. Uh, <laughs> and that was definitely not recommended. If you guys do decide to do pop, please read a guide on how the clocks work and the loot and the little mini games that you have to play. But I know for a couple of days I was attempting pop and we kept failing until we read a guide up on it and then we were golden and then what i did was 
easy Cygnus uh, for the week. I was able to solo her easy Cygnus and I believe her egg is around 24 mil or 27 mil so it's very worth it to do her weekly. She's not that hard to beat. Um, and after I did Von Leon prequest, which was honestly just killing and looting, um, which wasn't too hard, it was just kind of annoying <laughs> to do. And I started doing hard Von Leon every day as well. They're pretty good meso for the eggs. And after my stream for that day, I actually did a quick 11 coupon gacha run. I got absolute poo poo. They were all slot pouches. I got like one chair of one that I already had, and I, I don't know, and one new horoscope chair, but it, it was awful. Um, and I also leveled up after stream while I was doing uh, some scrapyard. And that wraps up day 6 recap. So day 7, again, we're doing some daily bosses with friends as well as solo dailies. Um, we did arc since we all had the prequest done with two binds. So I had a fifth job bind as well as my friend Keaton who had a bind from his class. He's a Hoyoung. Um, and then we got Helux carry by our guildmate. That was really nice of him. And I flamed some of my equips. I I think it boosted my range a bit. Um And after the Helix carry, we tried Path again. <laughs> like I said, we were failing for a bit because we didn't read up a guide for it. And it's actually really complicated if you don't know what to do. Um, and after PAP, I did the next part of Arcane River for level 205, and that's what I was talking about in, I believe, episode 1. Uh, the area is called Reverse City, and it's very nice to do because you get a cup of uh, Arcane Orb, um, and that helps level up the orb that you have equipped it. If you guys are doing arcane dailies, you should know about that. Um, and after I got that done, we were able to do our Absolab weekly quests. And if you guys haven't started this, you guys want to do your scrapyard weeklies as well as the dark tree weeklies along with those coins that you get weekly you want to combine them with lotus and damien coin drops to create absolap coins to buy those equips that you need for mid and late game and with that we're wrapping up day seven and moving into day eight on day eight same mode, you guys know we do delis every day. And then uh, we had some silly adventures. My friend Gordon wanted to LPQ for whatever reason. <laughs> so we did a couple of LPQs just for the nostalgia. And uh, it, was, it was pretty fun. Although I must say the level with the numbers, I really wish they kept that the same. Because now the random numbers instead of the pattern that all of us old players remember you know what i'm talking about you know the one two three one 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 two two one thing i i don't remember the order but y'all know but after we revisited our childhood a bit i ended up streaming some fall guys um that will be a separate video if you guys are interested in watching the gameplay. <laughs> this is a maple video, so we're keeping at maple. So after the stream, um, I actually leveled up to 208 
and went back to the event map to spend some of my coins. I did some cubing and this part was really frustrating because I get 18% dex on my ring. Dex. Of course not luck. Dex. But it was whatever, I guess, since we wanna cube our ring to legendary anyway. Uh, so we moved on. <laughs> Day 9, I really didn't do much again. I did my dailies, we attempted PAP again, and <laughs> we failed. Um, and I have actually forgot to record the footage for this day. Um, because majority of my stream after, I played some Valorant. Uh, so that was day 9, just dailies, and then Valorant. So on day 10, we actually did CPQ, Commerce CPQ. Um, it's like the same as solo trade in Commerce, but with a party. Uh, we did that three times, and then I got some hard Magnus carry from my guild master. And <laughs> this is very unfortunate, but right when Magnus died, I freaking died. So I didn't get any of the coins, and I didn't know that was the case. So if you guys are getting carried, make sure you guys are alive for when the boss dies because you want those coins, <laughs> um, unlike me. But, and after that, we finally was able to do pep because we read up a guide and we actually played the mini games correctly. So props to us for finally reading and by we I mean Gordon read a guide and taught all of us how to do the mini games. On this day I was also informed by Gordon that you could actually buy pendant slots and slot coupons in Hennessy's general store. So what I did was I, I went and bought an extra pendant slot and with that i was able to equip my reinforced necklace um and get a two set effect with my belt so that was nice that was a little nice uh range increase i cubed the reinforced pendant a bit and my blossom ring hat and belt also try to get a bit more range in for the bell, I actually didn't get anything nice, so that was unfortunate, but I got some decent percent of lux for the rank of the pots that I had for the rest of my equips. And after the stream for day 10, I was able to get to level 209 from finishing up my scrapyard weeklies, so it was a very productive week. Uh, moving on to day 11 and day 12, I didn't stream for either of the days since those are my days off, Tuesdays and Wednesdays now. Um, I might have to adjust stream schedule again since quarantine is kind of over and I, I'm probably gonna have to go to go back to work uh, next week. So I'll let you guys know on the updated schedule. Hopefully it's not that big of a difference. So on day 11 off stream, we did our dailies and I was able to get a normal Lotus and normal Damien carry from my guild. It, it was my first time doing it. I did look up some guides, but the bosses weren't that complicated. Uh, I feel like as long as you stay alive, it's, it's fine. I also started looking into my Kana. I wanted to use this new event to level her up and get her, well, eventually to 235 because that's the farming level these days. Um, so I wanted to take advantage of the current ongoing event. So on day 12, which was yesterday, I explored some of the new event. Um, so there's actually three NPC options that you can take. The NPC on the left doubles your 
daily reward so for arcane river if you guys do those it doubles the amount of orbs you get and whatever you pick for this event uh takes place for a week until it's reset and you can pick something else uh the middle npc is for extra exp that stacks up you you guys if you guys are doing training on your main i recommend you pick this one because you can train on any map uh and the exp buff stacks for four hours i believe and the npc on the right is for when you want to train mules which i'm currently doing i picked this one you get a 30 minute grind in this training room with these sand rats according to the level of your character and as your celestial level increases your the time will increase up to i believe 45 minutes um every day and you can do this on as many characters as you want every character gets 30 minutes this is why it's perfect for mule training and speaking of starting to train my Kana, I started doing Monster Park with her as well as I, I used some leveling potions on her and she's now at 175 as of right now. And she was level 150 something I believe when I started her. So on this day my main was able to get to 210 as well through some training. I wanted to do this so I could start the Chichi Island and Hungry Mutal prequest. Um, so I did the prequest for Hungry Mutal, and towards the end of the quest lines, I was actually lacking in some Arcane Force. I decided to give the rest of my hyperstats into Arcane Force to give me that extra hunch for what I was missing. Um, but once the Chichu prequests are done, you're, you're able to do Chichu dailies. It's similar to the first part of Arcane River where it's just grinding daily. Um, it also unlocks a Hungry Muto uh, party quest. Well, you could also do it solo, but it's pretty simple. A recipe shows on the map and all you have to do is collect items and bring it to the pot. Um, so I actually did train my Kana per the event that I talked about and during that 30 minutes it wasn't too bad. I got from 165 to 170. Not bad at all. Um, and uh, lastly I found out that these hot air balloons that go up and down on the event map you can actually get either exp or celestial points so the balloon on the left gives exp and the balloon on the right gives you celestial points and you want to be careful about the celestial points because there is a cap for it daily account wide uh, so pay attention to that um, if you guys have any questions please leave it down in the comment below i really hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.